Hello there, and thank you for watching yet another video from Surreal Adventure. So you want to get a pet watering system, a pet water fountain. Maybe you're away for a few days and you want to make sure your uh, animals have water. Uh, maybe your uh, water isn't the greatest and you want something to make sure that it's filtered. Uh, there's a lot of reasons to get one of these. Uh, mine was is that I, I leave my cats alone for days at a time sometimes and I want to make sure that they have water. Uh, and the, the municipal water here where I live isn't the best either. This uh, design is pretty cool because there's this uh, pool in the bottom and a reservoir on the back and it pumps up and through the filter underneath here and then spills into the pool at the bottom. Which means that if there's a power failure, well your cats still have all the water that's in the bottom and the tank on the back will empty into the bottom. So it may not get filtered in the event of a power failure, but at least the animals still have water to drink. Um, also there is a second benefit inherent to this design. Some of the other water filter systems that are available uh, online, and I, I've owned one in the past, they work by pumping the water up and then the water filters down through something. Now when you expose a filter media to large amounts of air, it breeds bacteria. If you've ever owned a saltwater aquarium system or uh, were into aquariums, you know how the old wet dry filters used to work. And you don't want your pets drinking out of a wet dry filter, <laughs> so that just breeds bacteria. This design was not designed that way, so the, the filter, which is located up in here, is almost totally submerged in the water. It's not mostly submerged to air, so you don't have to worry about uh, bacteria build up the way you do with some of the other ones. Um, I don't have a lot of video of cats drinking from it. I have one cat that loves to drink from the waterfall. I got another cat that loves to drink from the little pool in the bottom. But suffice to say that they do love it. It took them, you know, all of 10 minutes to figure out, hey, this is our new water source. And so they just, you know, immediately started doing that. Um, they've gotten so used to drinking from this that a couple times I had to pull it and I didn't have time to clean it. Uh, I'd put a bowl of water down. I, I witnessed my cats actually stick their paws into the bowl of water to make it wiggle before they would drink from it. So they want to drink from moving water. Okay, I'm going to show you how to clean your drink well pet filter. Um, I do have the uh, custom cleaning tools. I purchased them on the website, for, on the drink well website. Uh, they're basically like baby bottle cleaning stuff with uh, some pipe cleaners designed to help you uh, clean out some of the, the tubes and channels that are in this. Um, if you don't have these, your local dollar store, if you're in a, an area that has a dollar store, uh, will have baby bottle cleaning style stuff like, like this piece here, which will uh, assist in the process. First thing I do is I uh, take the whole thing apart, dump all the water out. Take the top half off. Take the little gate out. And we're going to remove the pump assembly here. It's held to the bottom by suction cups, so just gently pull up on it and uh, fish it through this hole and set it down inside. Now, I sort of have this hanging off the side of my, my sink here and there's a reason. And that's that I don't like to actually uh, submerge the electrical cord, this portion of it with the switch for the light and the connector are not designed to be underwater or wet. So I leave them hanging off the side. I recommend you do the same. I'm using some dish soap. An interesting little aside for those of you that want to make your own foaming soap, if you have a, a soap, a foaming soap uh, dispenser, all you have to do is uh, fill it up maybe about a quarter of the way with the actual soap you want to use and just fill it up the rest of the way with the water. And you got about the right mixture for foaming soap. So it helps you, helps your soap go a little bit further. So. 
Make sure that you scrub all the surfaces on the inside. After a couple weeks of use, you're going to notice that there's like this uh, film that builds up on the uh, inside surfaces, like a little bit of a slick. One of the things that I do is uh, after I've cleaned everything up, is I run my hand across the inside surfaces just to make sure they're not slick anymore. That will let you know that you cleaned them and that you got all the soap out. Set the, the base aside. Next piece is the upper half of the, the tower. I've put some soap in where the filter goes. And I'm going to use the tool that I got on the website. You can use a, your own scrubber if you have one available. And I'm just going to kind of make sure that this is entirely clean. One of the nice things about the uh, the tool set, if you buy it, or the cleaning set, if you buy it from them, is this this nice pipe cleaner they give you. And uh, there's this long pipe that goes down through to the bottom, and this allows you to clean. This is the this is the pipe that the water pumps up from. Make sure that you clean out the uh, inside as well. Although this is not a, a part of it that comes in direct contact with the water, it nevertheless can build up bacteria and you just don't want that happening. I've got a uh, 13 pound female Siamese cat and a 20 pound male Siamese cat and this filter with its uh, reservoir on the back filled is enough water for them for about a week which is really nice because uh, I know that I can go and go do something for a day or two if I have to leave the cats alone they're not gonna die of thirst and I'm gonna set this piece aside now that it's washed I'm going to wash the little gate. This is primarily there to prevent large things that might be in the water or fall in the water from getting into the back into the pump area where you're not going to see them. Clean that out with some soap and water. I change my filter every two weeks. Your results may vary depending on how many pets you have, how big the pets are, that sort of thing. Um, I buy these in bulk online from a major internet retailer, hint, hint, and they're relatively cheap. Uh, the cats love it. Clean all the surfaces thoroughly, make sure you get all the soap out of it. Okay, and now for the, the real fun part, we have the pump assembly, which is uh, important to clean as well. So I'm going to start off by uh, thoroughly cleaning the outside of this. You can use a scrub brush. I like using my fingers. All right, so now we're going to clean the uh, pump assembly. So what you're going to do is with the suction feet down, you're going to just gently pry this off. I just basically, what I did there, I'll do it again, is I just kind of lifted up on it and turned and it just pops out. It'll make a little tiny, a little snapping noise as the snaps come apart. So we're gonna set that aside. Next there's this cover and uh, to get this cover off, you'll notice the side with the, the hole in it is the cover, okay? So you look on the side here and you'll see a little seam. It runs all the way around, that's the cover. So I use my fingernail and I just stick my fingernail right in there, like so, and lift the cover off. So we're gonna clean that cover. Make sure it's clean. Same thing with this. Now this hollow portion of the tube here is also submerged in the water, so once again, uh, their cleaning kit comes in handy. Uh, you can uh, use the cleaning kit to actually get in here 
and scrub the inside of this tube to make sure that you've got all the, the bacteria and anything else that might be in there out. Now you're going to want to be a little bit more careful, or at least watch what you're doing when you do this part. Um, there's a cover and there's an impeller assembly on the inside of this. It's a magnet motor that's all water type. And uh, so what we're going to do is there's a little tab. Brush this off so you can see it. All right, so there's a little tab sticking out right there on the corner. And I'm going to lift on it with my fingernail, and that's going to get the, uh, the cover of the motor off. All right, so that's off. Don't worry, this doesn't fall out. And we're going to set this here, to clean this, and then set this here. Set it aside. Now we're going to remove the little impeller assembly. And so you're going to need your fingernail for this. You're going to stick it in there. Pull up on it, and there's your little rotor portion of your magnet motor. Now we're going to put some soap in the, uh, the housing here, the magnet motor. And using the tool that came with the kit, I'm going to use the pipe cleaner to clean around the inside of the magnet motor. Make sure that I get all the the surfaces. I don't think that's the outside of this yet, so we're going to scrub that too. Make sure you get underneath the suction cups where stuff can hide. I'm going to take the little magnet impeller, make sure everything's free of soap, of course, and we're just going to drop it in there. Magnets, it magnets itself in. Then we're going to grab our little cover with the tab, just line the shapes up. Stick it over the top and push it down. Then we're going to take the cover for the whole assembly. There's a notch missing right here that corresponds to this little hole. So you just put it over there and push it till it snaps. Okay, now it's back on. Now this, this piece here, the little control arm sticks up away from these little rubber feet. So it's going to go this way. So rubber feet down, control arm up, just twist and push and it clicks in. And you should have about a 45 degree range of motion on this control arm when it's back in properly. Here, here is a fresh filter. Um, little trick, you're going to want to rinse this out thoroughly before you put it in the device. If you don't, it's not going to hurt anything, but powders of, the powdery charcoal in this filter will get everywhere because a, a little bit of it gets out upon initial, initial use. So we're just going to rinse this out. And so now we're going to reassemble it real quick. We've got the base. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to reinstall the uh, motor assembly. So the way you do that is you fish the motor assembly in from underneath it, right here. It comes up through that hole, like, like this. Bring the whole thing in. Suction cups go down sits in the little grooves right here. Push down on it, and I just basically leave that on the bottom or leave that loose. Next piece is the tower. Now the, 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 the pump is going to pump up through this tube all the way to the top in here. So we're going to set the tower over it. It's notched, but it only goes in one way. And you'll know it notches here and notches there. Fits in. And we're going to take our charcoal filter. We're going to put the charcoal facing this direction. Replace the little gate. Don't forget to clean the, the cap for the reservoir around, underneath, both sides, soap. Make sure you touch every surface with the whole thing. 
Alright, now the reservoir and the cap are clean. So the next thing we're going to do before we put this back, and it's going to make it a lot easier and it's going to save you a trip, is we're going to fill this. First we're going to fill the top part of the reservoir until the water spills out. Then we're going to fill the base. It takes quite a bit of uh, water to fill the base. So if, you're, if you forget this step and you're expecting the reservoir to, to do it for you, you're going to empty your reservoir and you're going to make another trip. So right about there, I'd say it's about a quarter of an inch, maybe uh, a centimeter from the top. Okay, now that this is full, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go set it back down and plug it in. It's going to be a lot easier to set down and plug in like this without the cover on, without the tank on. After it's up and running, I'm going to fill the tank and bring that over. A note about the light on the device. Um, I don't know how much better it is for your pets to be able to see. Maybe some people have pets that are going to be using this that can't see too well. And Well, in a dark room, the water kind of glows, so that can potentially help the pet. But I've found that using the light, anytime you have light, as any aquarium enthousi enthusiast will tell you, depending on the spectrum of the light, algae is going to grow and the color of the algae is going to be based on the, the spectrum of the light. So naturally if you leave the light on on this thing all the time then uh, algae grows. So I just leave the light off. I have two cats and cats, unless they've got vision problems, can see in the dark. So they don't need the light. In their case, the light is entirely for humans. So in closing, I would say that this represents a pretty good value. It works well. It doesn't make too much noise. You can hear the water dripping a little bit sometimes. Uh, it alleviates the worry of, hey, what if I'm out an extra day or my animal is going to die of thirst. So, you know. But one thing I will say is that having one of these isn't really less work than having just a regular bowl of water and the reason being is you know if you have to clean it out roughly once every two weeks then that's uh, just as hard as having to refill a bowl of water almost every day so but you know it's give and take and in this case I like to have filtered water for my pets uh, and you will too thanks a lot for watching and uh, please subscribe